Hi, everyone. Bob Black here, getting you set for what's going to be a very special weekend on the University of Richmond campus, and specifically Saturday, May 7th at Pitt Field, when this year's Spider baseball team is playing George Mason. But we will have a tremendous celebration and reunion of our 2002 team. 20 years ago that advanced to the NCAA Super Regionals and came within one game, six outs really, of the College World Series. And here to talk a little bit about what the weekend's going to be like and reminisce about some of the great times of a 53-win 2002 team is one of the leaders of that team, Vito Cheravalati, uh, who led that team in home runs with 23 and RBIs with 86 none bigger than what could arguably call the biggest home run in the history of Richmond baseball, the grand slam that beat Nebraska in game two of the super region. Speedo, great to see you again. Uh, does that seem like yesterday or does that seem like a long time ago? It's funny, Bob, it's funny because when you say 20 years and, and, and the guys and I, we've been joking a lot about it. I mean, we can't believe it's been 20 years. We can't believe that we're now parents, most of us, right? I mean, we, I think mentally so many of us feel like we could be right back in those moments in 2002 <laughs> and, uh, and at times we really want to be right. Um, so it, in, in many ways, it does feel like it was just yesterday. Um, some of the greatest memories that have lasted a lifetime and will continue. And in other ways that, you know, the 20 years, so much has happened and guys have had incredible paths of their own, um, you know, since those days and, 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 you know, have created legacies in, in other ways beyond the game of baseball. Uh, so it's been, it's been beautiful to watch and see over the last 20 years. So we're excited to get back next week. So it would be easy to start this conversation at the end, right? With the regional in Winston-Salem and beating Wake Forest and then going to Nebraska. But let me ask you to go back to the beginning of that season kind of a great unknown. Uh, this was a team primarily of younger guys in a new conference for the first time, the Atlantic 10, and you guys burst out of the gates and won your first 10 games that year. What was the start of the season like for you guys? And how did that kind of springboard you to where it eventually went? It's a great question. I actually think that it goes back to even the fall of that year. You know, if you go back to our fall season, we knew we had a special group. Um, Number one, none of us could hit Stoffer, McGurr, or, or, or Martin in practice, right? So in all those fall games, we were like, man, our starting pitching is going to be phenomenal, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So we knew we had three of the best pitchers in the country, uh, which wind up playing out that way. Um, and offensively, I think we had a confidence to know that we were going to score runs. So that started in the fall. And we went into winter workouts that, that year with a motivation and a determination um, that I was, I never had seen before. And honestly, I'd never played on a team again that was as motivated, as confident, um, and as driven as that O2 squad. And, and we attacked the winter workouts. Um, you know, we, we came every day with our, with our very best. We couldn't wait to get out there in the spring. And so it really had built over a course of that entire year, starting back in fall ball. And so when we came out, you never really do know um, how a team's going to perform until you get into real games and start putting up wins. And so I think we got out to that hot start and it was almost proving to us that, yes, you know, this is, you know, we're as good as we think we are and we're going to take this as far as we can. And so whenever you can get out to that kind of a hot start, especially in a season where, you know, it's 53 games goes really quickly or, or 56 games goes really quickly. Um, and so before you know it, you know, it's April, and, and we had seen that our first two years, a lot of those juniors on the team, freshman and sophomore year, before we knew it, we're looking up, and it's like, man, we're, we're out of contention, <laughs> you know, so, and, and there's not a lot of time to make up any ground, so when you can get out to a hot start the way we did, I think it just further built that confidence that we, that foundation that we had laid from the fall and the winter, um, and then we were off and running, and we got into conference play, and we just felt like there wasn't a day that we walked in the field, that there was a team better than us. And, and that was a really special feeling every single day to, to in practice, to compete against, you know, each other um, in a way where we pushed one another. Um, we loved one another. We're a very close team. Um, and so we got the most out of that season, you know, and like you said, getting out to that hot start definitely helped. Then you rolled through the Atlantic 10 and first year in the league at, at 22 and two. And I'll tell you, Vito, one of my great memories, I know we lost it, but was the best of three series for the Atlantic 10 championship against George Washington at Pitt Field. And it was an amazing scene. I never seen so many people ringing that 
field since I've been at Richmond and maybe since I've been at Richmond. What was that experience like for you guys and losing it, but knowing you were still going to the NCAA tournament? Right, right. Yeah, I think for us, it was a really important factor going into the regional, you know, because not to say that if we would have won the conference tournament that we would have uh, not won the regional. But I think for us, it really was like, hey, like we got to make sure that we show up every inning, every day. And GW, they played us hard. I mean, they always played us hard. We had great series against them. They had some really exceptional pitching. Um, so those were battles. Those games were definitely battles. But to lose, I'll never forget losing that series and, and all of us being extremely disappointed because I think that we had no doubt that we were the better team. And we really, I don't want to say we took it for granted, but I do think it, it, it gave us a sense of urgency going into the regional. Like, hey, let's leave no doubt here. Like, let's go in, leave no doubt who the best team in this region is. And so it gave us that little bit of extra motivation. But I remember that series very well. And it was um, it was a, it was a, it was a tough series, but I remember how packed it was. It was a lot of fun to play, um, and like I yeah, I, we, there weren't many crowds that we had played in, in front of that were that big. All right, on to better memories: the regional tournament down in Winston Salem and getting the host team, and I think they were ranked fourth in the nation in Wake Forest. That second game, Vito, had to be the key one uh, that we beat Wake Forest and forced them to have to beat you guys twice. And of course, I think the signature moment in that game was the Brian Pritz throw to third base to David Reaver for the double play that ended the first Wake Forest game and put you guys in the driver's seat, right? And I can still see Reaver after that tag, you know, coming up and showing, showing the ball to the hump and, and us going nuts after that game. And yeah, I mean, those are, that was intense. That was intense. And Pritz had done it all year, by the way. Let's not, I mean, you know, we can't forget how good of a defensive player and how accurate of a throwing arm Brian Pitts had. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know how many assists he had. You'd have to look that up. But I felt like there wasn't a guy who could run on him. Um, so it was phenomenal to watch him um, in center field every day. We just, you know, we had such a great defensive team. Um, you know, obviously the offense spoke for itself and the pitching. We're just well balanced. But uh, but that was big, and we had no doubt going in. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna take this one, and then we're we're going to super regionals. All right, we'll take us to the final day because the first game against Wake had beat us twice, and they did in extra innings, which set the stage for one game winner take all. You knocked in four runs in that game and made sure the Spiders were going to the super regional. What do you kind of remember about that day? And once you got into that second game, knowing it was one and done for both teams. Yeah, I mean, look, we, obviously the pressure was on for sure. But I think, again, a hallmark of that team was we never lost belief in ourselves, uh, no matter what obstacles. And there weren't many obstacles that year that we really faced, honestly. You know, we had 13 losses the whole season. And so, you know, um, we, we never lost belief that we were, when we got on that field, we were the best team. And, and in that last game, I, I will never forget you know, Matty McLaughlin coming in, right, mm -hmm. and just having all the faith in him and, and the performance that he gave that day was incredible um, to, to really to cap it off. And, and, and that, that pile on um, that we had at Wake Forest, uh, I remember giving Bobby Lenore the biggest hug in the world <laughs> after we won that game. And it was, it was a special moment. I mean, we came out, um, uh, we really believed that we were the better team, but I think that after we lost that game, you know, the prior game, we knew we respected Wake Forest, obviously. Um, we had great respect for them, but we just felt like it was our year and we felt like we deserved to get to the Supers and, 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 and we did it and we proved it and it was, uh, it was outstanding. It was a great, great day. And then there you are, Lincoln, Nebraska against the Nebraska Cornhuskers, Super Regional, ironically, what, 60 miles away from Omaha. That's geographically how close you were. And then from a game standpoint, how close you guys came. Um, what do you remember about game one that set up game two and your heroics where we had, you know, two of the aces of staffs in the entire country in game one that they won two to nothing yeah. before the dramatic game two grand slam that you hit? Well, I remember game one, you know, being really disappointed that we couldn't offer more support to Stauffer. He pitched a great game. I think I, I, you have to correct me. I, I believe the two runs were unearned. I think one, uh, one of the two. One yeah. of the two runs one was unearned. Yeah. Yep. And I just remember the feeling of, you know, 
we know we can hit and, and look, Shane Kamine was an outstanding pitcher and he had our number that day. I mean, we just, we were off balance. We, we, we really couldn't get the barrel of the ball. Um, we couldn't get anything going. We just felt like, uh, um, you know, we couldn't get base runners on him and, and he pitched, he pitched a, a great game. Um, you know, but I, I know how disappointed we were to waste a great start by stopper. Um, and so, you know, we were all disappointed that night going in and, uh, we knew we knew we had to win, obviously, game two, and, and we did not want our season to end, clearly. Um, we got a heck of a pitching performance in game two, obviously, by uh, by Thomas Martin. Mm -hmm. And, and um, you know, we were we were fortunate enough to be in the right spot there to 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 be the home team that day to get a crack at it in the bottom of the ninth and get get a bunch of guys on base um, to make it really easy to, you know, give us opportunities to score run score run in the ninth to win it. So. Um, you know, it was, uh, I'll never forget the crowd. I mean, I, you know, I played baseball a long time and, and I had never seen a crowd like that. I'd never seen, you know, the, the amount of red shirts in a crowd. And I remember us purposefully wearing red on Friday <laughs> because we wanted to, we were just, we had a little edge to ourselves, right? We, we wanted to show up and we're like, oh, you're going to wear red, but we're going to wear red too. And, and I think that showed a lot of our personality as a team and our confidence. Um, but, uh, but yeah, game two was special. I mean, packed house, never seen that many people before in a baseball stadium. So it was a lot of fun. It's a memory that will last, uh, last a lifetime. Well, you left them seeing red at the end of uh, game two and the quietest walk off home run of all time, because we were technically the home team in that game. And you've never heard 8,500 people so silent after you knocked that ball out of the park. Come on now, Vito. What was that moment like? Do you remember anything about running around the bases, about the crack of the bat, um, you know, that moment, how you're going to tell it? to your young kids when it's time for you to, to, to brag about what dad did in college. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable. And you, you hit it on the head when you said, do you remember running around the bases? I really don't. Um, I remember the pitch very well. I, I feel like I can be back in the batter's box for that moment for sure. Um, I'm just glad I swung at it. Right. It's like one of those things where you see it and, and, and you're just glad that you put a good, good, good hack on it and, and you found the barrel. But after that, it, it all does kind of blur away. Um, the next thing I remember, to be quite honest with you, was, um, was us winning the coin flip for the next day. And I remember how fired up we all were to be the home team in game three, to have Mikey McGurr going out there for us. And so, you know, we, I remember leaving that field having 100% certainty that we were going to the College World Series. And um, although it didn't work out to, to have that moment in time and to remember that feeling that all of us had going into sleeping that night, believing we're going to Omaha, um, you know, what a blessing to have ever even been able to have that experience, to have those feelings, to be that close. And so, although ultimately it didn't work out for us, you know, for 24 hours, you know, we felt like we were the best team on earth. And, um, and I think that, honestly, I think that we were. I think we could have been one of the best teams that year uh, when it was all said and done. It wasn't in the cards for us. But at the end of the day, um, you know, we really showed what Richmond Spider Baseball was about and uh, something that we we're all very proud of. All right, let's finish this up, Vito. We could go on and on, believe me. Oh, yeah. I certainly could. But let's fast forward to the present and to this reunion that'll take place uh, here in Richmond at UR at Pitt Field. What's that going to be like for you guys? I know you've stayed in touch and, and all of that, but this is going to bring you all back together you know, on the field where that season, that magical record-setting season all happened. We can't wait. I mean, we're a very close group still. Um, I've mentioned this before how, you know, yes, there have been, you know, little little sects of the team that have broken off and, and have their own little groups, but together we still we still communicate often. Uh, we've been in each other's weddings um, over the last 20 years. Uh, we're very close, but because we're spread all over the country, we rarely do get together, especially over the last few years as we're having children. It's just getting a little bit busier as life gets. And so I think for all of us, we're extremely excited to get back just together, right? Um, it is, uh, it's really humbling and nice that the school wants to do something and that Tracy has put this all together and that the current team is welcoming us, the current parents are welcoming us back to campus and, and they're going to honor us in the field. And, and that's all great. But at the end of the day, it really is just about getting the group of us back together and, and um, 
and you know, we're very close friends and, and, uh, and I can't wait to see everybody. So we're excited. We can't wait to, to watch some merchant baseball. Um, really excited to see the current team getting to know some of those guys. Uh, and I know for me personally, you know, a lot of the other guys who have kids in the, uh, who have children now, uh, really excited to, to have our children watch us, you know, go out in the field. We're going to bring our kids out in the field after the game. Um, I know my daughter, she's only three years old, but she loves baseball. And Olivia cannot, she can't wait. I told her she's going to run the bases where daddy used to play baseball and she thinks it's the greatest thing in the world. And so, you know, uh, I think a lot of us are really looking forward to that as well. Uh, excited to see you in person uh, for this reunion, Vito, and all the other guys as well. It'll be a memorable experience and just some great times from 20 years ago. Uh, thanks for spending some time reliving it for us today, Vito. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bob. No, really appreciate it. Can't wait to see you, buddy. It's been way too long.